<laughs> Tell them to come with you to Valhalla. Yeah, yeah. Well, my name is Ernesto Isakura and I've been a vegetarian my whole life. Uh, I've been vegan for about uh, almost three years. Well, I think I, the reason why I became vegan is uh, because I decided to be consequent with uh, what I say, at least in one of the areas of my life. And so what, how do you, I, what do you say? Uh, well, because I believe that uh, one shouldn't harm. I believe that we shouldn't uh, treat uh, beings, living beings, differently uh, depending on their species. I believe that it is not necessary to eat meat or any animal product. I believe that um, we are not uh, carnivorous animal, animals or even omnivores. Um, so you think that it's uh, perfectly self and safe and healthy to eat plant foods? I have absolutely no doubt. I've been vegetarian, as I said, my whole life. I've lived quite an active life. I've always been uh, doing sports uh, during my whole life. I've uh, been to university, so I haven't had I haven't had any any lack of energy or Brain function. Uh, brain function or muscle development or I don't know what else they can mm. say or mm. uh, yeah they usually relate um, vegetarianism and veganism to anemia and mm. other <clears throat> kind of diseases uh, related to lack of energy mm -hmm. I can say it, it's not true because I um, I always have been quite energetic mm. with a plant-based uh, diet You've been here for a couple of days as a volunteer and you have been helping out, so thank you a lot for, for that. It's always good to have a, another hand here. Thank you for having uh, me. I think you have to have a humble approach. Mm -hmm. I think you are volunteering mm -hmm. and I think you are traveling the world. The world is not traveling you. Mm -hmm. So I cannot come here and impose my methods. I mm -hmm. cannot come here and say what I want. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so if I am volunteering, it's because I decided that I wanted to come to someone else's property, to someone else's land, to someone else's space mm -hmm. and contribute to mm -hmm. whatever that person sees fit mm -hmm. um, with whatever project they are developing. Mm -hmm. So obviously you have to go as a volunteer with the most humble uh, approach and just do the best you can with what is being required uh, from you. Of course then if you go to a place and then you feel uncomfortable by what they ask you to do or their methods then you're also always free to uh, say no say no or go your way, mm -hmm. go different ways. Mm -hmm. Have you volunteered any other place? I so have, I have. There are always uh, Pros and cons. different things, yeah. Some, and it's, it's always going to be as complex as we as humans are. Mm -hmm. uh, we will like things and we will dislike, uh, dislike some things from every project. But I think we should emphasize more on the things we like mm -hmm. because otherwise we're going to be just complaining around uh, and um, it's not what we are here for mm -hmm. uh, if you having this kind of lifestyle if you could change one thing what would it be from here lake and greg yeah. vegan camp yeah is there something specifically you like about this place yeah like um i think the probably the thing i like the most about this place is how again you find vegan sustainable minded project mm -hmm. in the middle of uh, a community that probably isn't living that way. Mm -hmm. So I think that I like how far in and deep in the farm and the land, the piece of land is in a community. It is not something that is completely uh, excluded from isolated. Uh, and isolated from from the Thai life. So we are, I think, surrounded by properties of Thai people everywhere and you see Thai people everywhere and it's a, you have that feeling of a Thai country life going on around us. And I think 
that even though you are always like looking forward to meet uh, great like-minded people, I think the reason that uh, we are traveling is because we want to experience other countries and other cultures. Mm -hmm. So here you have the opportunity to walk around a uh, the most uh, authentic um, town, like mm. one of you know, like mm. one of the most authentic expressions of a town, of or a, a Thai town, vill village. Yeah, of a village. Yeah. So um, everyone has been super nice. Everyone su has been super friendly in the village. They have only give us smiles and uh, food and veggies, and um, it's um, it's good to be bonding with other people without uh, even with the um, barrier of the language being there. The experience of getting the, the, the food yourself from the mm. trees and stuff like that? I think you... is one of the most important things. I think we are, as a society, uh, as a race, so disconnected from uh, where the food comes from. Mm -hmm. And I think most people don't know where the food comes from. They probably children. If you ask children, most of the children in the world right now, where the food comes from, they're gonna aim, like aim uh, um, the supermarket. Mm. Uh, so I think, if, if for many reason, it's very important to go and grab your veggies, your fresh veggies, and eat them straight away. And uh, one of them being because you realize how much effort has been put into one single tomato mm. that you are putting in your mouth. Um, that has a long history of watering, of uh, gathering nutrients from the ground, gathering nutrients from the sunbeams, mm -hmm. uh, gathering nutrients from the rain, and all the love and effort that the person uh, who cares, who looks after the garden, has put into that little tomato that you are um lucky enough to be putting your mouth so i think it unconsciously uh, leads us to eat a little bit less i think because uh, i think it um nurtures us a little bit more mm. because we appreciate what we're eating mm. and in any country if you go to any village at least from my experience people um, tend to eat less than what people in the big cities eat mm -hmm. uh, so we are a very we are a very high consuming society mm -hmm. um, and besides of that there are many other reasons like uh, it of course being more healthy because mm -hmm. it's fresh mm -hmm. and uh, yeah we had uh, a papaya two days ago that was probably the best papaya I've had in Thailand mm. and we just got it from the tree, peeled it, sliced it and into my, our mouths. Where is the best papaya you have had in the world? I would have to say my country, Venezuela. <laughs> probably most of the best fruit, tropical fruit I've had. Mm. Yes, there are many different types. We have uh, the red papaya and the yellow papaya as well, we call it. Mm -hmm. um, I think you call it orange. Yeah, whatever. Um, we have a papaya we call pajarera, mm -hmm. which is a bit smaller, mm -hmm. very sweet, and it's usually yellow as well. Mm -hmm. um, we just have a very, very rich soil and a lot of water and ideal uh, uh, climate. So I would say most of the tropical fruit, of the best tropical fruit I've had in my life, I've had in my country. Some people say there are some projects of like for permaculture and other stuff in Ecuador. So I don't know how Ecuador would uh, compare with Venezuela. I don't know if you know. Uh, it would probably be quite similar. Uh, I haven't been to Ecuador mm -hmm. myself, but I know that there are many good projects going on right there. Um, I know that permaculture is very big and very organized right now in South America. Mm -hmm. I was talking with an Australian friend and he was telling me how apparently South America seems to be the most organized uh, continent or subcontinent or piece of a continent mm -hmm. in the world uh, in terms of uh, network mm -hmm. uh, within um, permaculture farms. Mm -hmm. uh, I know my sister uh, went there mm -hmm. uh, to Ecuador and she kind of took part into 
this beautiful community of local people, uh, indigenous to a certain extent, house teaching, uh, home teaching their children. Okay. And, um, it's like an eco village type Yeah, thing. kind of an eco village and they're teaching their children themselves and they're planting their food and it was a beautiful experience for them. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think um, it's pretty close. I mean, we're a little bit above the equator mm -hmm. and they are of course uh, in the equator. Are you trying to find your purpose or do you think you know your purpose? Uh, I wouldn't go that far to say that I know my purpose. I think that is uh, something only very few people in the world know. But I think that I have a goal right now and traveling is a very important um, aspect of it because I, I'm using traveling as a knowledge gathering tool. So the plan is to travel um, as much as I can yeah, for the next, for the upcoming uh, future. Maybe a couple of years if I'm lucky enough. Started in Thailand and then I'm going to Vietnam, Cambodia, Laos and then yeah, keep traveling, keep traveling. And the idea has always been to travel, volunteer, help whenever I can, whenever my uh, skills can be useful. I think we should be helping each other. We, we should we should uh, come together. We, uh, uh, we are we have been taught many times uh, to break the community. I think when good projects are uh, um, going on in, uh, in the planet and on the planet and um, you have you're lucky enough to have the time, the energy, the resources, to and the will to go and help and then you, also, you will always learn you will always learn yeah. so it's a growing process mm. it's uh, that's why i was saying more like mm. let's say volunteering and learning so i don't want to have the approach of um, a privileged guy from a privileged society from a privileged country that goes to a non so privileged country and says i'm going to go there and save the world and i'm going to help mm. Probably I think we should all uh, be humble enough to know that we are probably going to uh, learn a lot. We are, we are, we're probably doing this, we're all doing this to be helped somehow. Mm -hmm. And yes, to cooperate, mm -hmm. to, because I think that uh, we are growing a lot while we're doing this. And well, the plan has been uh, since the beginning, as I was saying, to gather all the good knowledge, to gather all the wisdom, to gather all the experiences, all the skills that I can mm. during this trip, so I can implement that mm. in an area that I see fit in the future. Mm. It could be with a project of my own, or it could be with the project of someone else. You were the first one ever sleeping in the new <laughs> um, metal construction. Mm. It's completely livable, completely comfortable. It's more comfortable than what you usually get, I would say, but um, it does get a little bit warm during mm. the day. Mm. I think it could use a window, an extra window to uh, promote ventilation and mm -hmm. airflow. Mm -hmm. But if you want to keep it like without having to use energy, maybe you could uh, think in long term of planting a tree that could shade a little bit. Mm and protect okay. it from the sun. Mm. There are many ways to, to make it a little mm. bit more uh, enjoyable, mm. Mm. but I wouldn't complain. I'm planning to possibly open a blog. Uh, if, it's, if it's possible, I'd probably uh, contact you so that you can feature me and I can feature yeah. the camp uh, on yeah. my blog. I think I could be of help in different areas. I speak three languages. I am native in Spanish. My English is quite good, uh, German also high level, so I could help them with um, Spanish um, uh, and German as well, or in English, through Skype or any other platform that uh, we see fit. And other than that, I could help people with AutoCAD, drafting, I'm a civil engineer, uh, even like I just did my PDC at Sahainan, uh, which is a organic farm here in Thailand. And PDC uh, is permaculture design course. Permaculture design course, that's correct. So even having the um, engineering skill set 
plus the PDC. I uh, would love to be involved in a project of someone that wants to develop a permaculture farm and needs um, uh, someone to help them with uh, the building aspect of it or any other aspect of it, uh, design like, as well. Like building buildings? Yeah, building buildings or uh, any aspect that um, permaculture uh, addresses. Of course, I'm not an expert. I've only done my PDC a couple of weeks ago. But I am going to be traveling across the globe, trying to aiming um, to get involved in different permaculture oriented uh, farms. And then on top of that, I've been captioning a little bit. Uh, on top of that, I could do transcribing, I could do translating, proofread in maybe English and Spanish. Writing, uh, I'm open. I'm open to any opportunity that uh, might arise. Hi, Mom! <laughs>